So uh, what's on the bench today is a Tektronix uh, plug-in module for their modular test equipment uh, uh, product, the TM500 type of thing, 5000. Um, so I've, first of all, I have to say that I've never been a fan of that particular system. I've avoided it for many, many years, but I decided, hey, I, I've never given it a shot. I've never given it a fair chance. I've never actually even uh, touched one, to, to, to be completely honest. Uh, well, I, 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 okay, I've touched them, um, but um, I've never felt the need to have one. I always thought they were a bit cheesy mechanically. I thought they were cheesy electronically. Um, the idea was nice. The idea was that you had um, a common uh, chassis, like like the VXI chassis, right? Um, and and I guess Tech was the first one to do that. So this can't operate on its own, and that's one of the one of the complaints I have. So not only this cannot operate on its own, I can't troubleshoot it. There's, there's no way for me to troubleshoot this without the rest of it. And if you put it in the rest of it, you can't troubleshoot it because it's all shoved inside. And so you, there's barrier to entry to play with these modules. You have to have one unit that's going to be where you put your devices, and then you have to have a separate unit for bench use so you can troubleshoot things and stuff. So I've got those things on order. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give this thing a fair shake. Uh, I've ordered a few modules. This is the first one that's arrived. So, so this one came in the mail today. This is probably the cheapest module that you can find. Uh, this is the uh, power supply, uh, the PS503A. So the big box is just a power supply and then the cards plug in it. So what does this box do? It just takes the power supply and brings it to the outside world. Um, it does do some regulation and stuff. You can adjust the voltage and stuff. So, I mean, there's stuff inside, okay. Um, but it is just a pass-through power supply. Um, uh, or you can say that's like, half of the power supply. So I think I paid 20 some odd dollars for this. Um, and uh, so, like I said, I, I was never crazy about the mechanical construction of these things. Uh, this one has just a uh, some some sides that come off. They're a little bit cheesy and they bend they bend easily. This one, the, the, both of these are all bent up. And uh, the reason I got this one cheap is because uh, something smashed it in the front, and the uh, front panel is all is all really bashed really bashed in. It's got a big big bow in it. So um, I think today I'm going to take all of these things off, pull pull the front off and straighten it uh, the right way. I thought maybe we could reach in there, but nah, it makes sense to just pull it out. There's a, there's a, a sheet metal plate uh, that is the mechanical strength, and then there's this plastic uh, front panel that goes on it. And the front panel, these plastic front panels are always broken, 100%. <laughs> They're always broken. They're always broken on the corners. This one's no exception. It's broken here. The front's been bashed. This thing's been around the block. It's been heavily, heavily bashed in right there. So, um, yeah, okay, I paid, I paid a little money for it, um, but um, it, it just doesn't seem real secure. But it's got some giant uh, capacitors in it. Uh, don't know if those are good or bad. Some other capacit capacitors down here. Um, one of the other things that are... Uh, a negative for these is the sockets that uh, TI used. They have really terrible edge connection sockets. And most people just say, ah, immediately just re-socket the whole thing. Well, that's a lot of work. I mean, recapping is bad enough, but re-socketing everything? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, okay. Like I said, I'm going to try to give a fair assessment to it and everything. Um, they have a keyed uh, edge connector, so you can't put it in upside down. Uh, yeah, it's got this funky little pull tab with all, they always break off. This one's intact, actually. Uh, a tab that's always broken off. So uh, the things just weren't, they just weren't rugged. And like I said, they're not self-contained. I like units that are all self-contained. I can troubleshoot them all on their own. And anyway, I'm waiting for the, uh, like I said, I'm waiting for the bench supply. I've ordered two um, modules, a three wide and a two wide. The two wide I'm going to turn into my bench supply to do troubleshooting with. And then the three wide will be my golden standard and I'll put everything into that. So anyway, so I think today 
I'm going to see if I can remove all the front knobs. Some of them I'm going to have to desolder the wires on. Some of them I can just loosen the connector and push it through the other side. So that, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, in case people haven't seen one of these before, let me change the camera angle a little bit here. Um, there is a uh, volts knob here, some volts knob here, coarse and fine. There's a pole that puts it in a tracking mode for the dual supply. So there's uh, 0 to 20 volts here and 0 to 20 volts here. Um, and I don't know if this one's negative. It's not marked negative. Oh, yeah, it says negative here, but it's not marked negative here. So that, um, come on, guys. <laughs> Mark the damn thing negative right here if, if it's negative. Anyway, so negative 0 to 20 and positive 0 to 20. And then here's a 5 volt. So the 5 volt comes out at 1 amp. And the other ones come out at 1 amp if you have... the. So that's another problem with these things. If you put it into the right power supply and the right socket of the right power supply. It's got this switch in the back that tells it if it's high power or low power. If it's low power, then it's only 400 milliamps on both sides. And uh, there's current limit adjustments. So, I mean, it's full power supply. Um, 320, 400 milliamps, and plus you get a five volt. So yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, it's okay. And then there's an output uh, on off. And I don't know if that switches all of it or not, or just these, I'm not sure output on and off. Maybe it switches them all. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, let's, uh, let's tear this thing apart and try to get it straightened. Okay. Oh, we've got a lot of solder threads. Oh no! 
Covered up. Yeah, start. I wish I came out, say that. Right on there. Right, one left. Jeez. That's okay, buddy. That's all good. Alright, I'm gonna Yeah. All right. Oh, 
Yeah. Big, big requires a comment. Makes sense. Big requires a Uh, yeah, I'll be faster. Yeah, All right. Pretty sure. That green one is called up here. That one's called up here. Okay, here. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'll do that. Green's up here because it's a different round. It's a different round. Okay, that's right. That's right. That was a lot of work. That was much more work than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, got it all back, uh, all back together, and uh, and pretty straight. And the corners aren't bent anymore. They're still broken, but they aren't bent anymore. Oh, I forgot to put my, uh, I forgot to put my Tektronics thing on. Uh, I need to. It actually. Getting it on, I think, will be a piece of cake because it just kind of flips up and pushes into that little thing there. There we go. So, okay, that's easy. All back together. I'll be waiting for the power supplies. So we could check this thing out, see if it works or not, and uh, do the fixing it needs fixing. <laughs>